Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE chemistry lesson where you'll learn absolutely everything you need to know on topic 11.3 fuels. As always we'll be following the Cambridge syllabus exactly and we'll learn absolutely everything you need to know for your final exam. Please know I'm only posting half the topics in the syllabus here on YouTube. The entire syllabus is going up on my Patreon, link below. Also if you like the slides I use in my videos they will eventually be available to download soon after I finish producing all the videos. Once done I'll put a link to those in the description as well. Coal, natural gas and petroleum are often referred to as fossil fuels as they're thought to have formed in the geological past from the remains of living organisms. Fuels like these are primarily composed of hydrocarbons, which are organic compounds that contain covalently bonded hydrogen and carbon atoms only. Examples include alkenes such as ethene and butene and alkanes like propane and methane which is the main constituent of natural gas. Petroleum, or crude oil, by comparison, is a complex mixture containing hundreds, if not thousands, of different hydrocarbon compounds. This mixture can be separated into more useful products, like gasoline and diesel, through a process called fractional distillation. So fractional distillation separates a mixture of hydrocarbons, like those found in petroleum, based on their boiling points using a tall column called a fractionating column. Fractional distillation works because different sized hydrocarbons have different boiling points and therefore condense at different temperatures. Firstly, the petroleum is heated, causing the hydrocarbons to vaporize. The hot vapors are fed into the fractionating column, which is hotter at the bottom and cooler at the top. As the vapours rise, they gradually cool down and condense into liquids. Hydrocarbons with higher boiling points condense lower down in the column, that is, at higher temperatures, while those with lower boiling points condense higher up. The different condensed or liquid fractions are then collected at different points along the column. Now the properties of the fractions obtained from petroleum change from the bottom to the top of the fractionating column. Those that collect nearer the top contain shorter hydrocarbon chains held together by weaker intermolecular forces of attraction. This means that, moving up the column, fractions are more volatile, less viscous, and have lower boiling points. Volatility refers to the tendency of a substance to vaporize, and viscosity to the thickness or ease with which a liquid flows. Working from the top of the fractionating column to the bottom, the names and uses of the fractions obtained include refinery gas for gas used in heating and cooking, gasoline or petrol for fuel used in cars, naphtha as a chemical feedstock, which is a raw material used in the mass production of chemical products, kerosene or paraffin for jet fuel, diesel oil or gas oil for fuel used in diesel engines, fuel oil for fuel used in ships and home heating systems, lubricating oil for lubricants, waxes and polishes, and finally bitumen for making roads. Well done, you just covered absolutely everything you need to know on topic 11.3 fuels. If you benefited from this video remember to subscribe to the channel and check out my Patreon where I'll be uploading the entire chemistry syllabus. Join me there for our next lesson on topic 11.4 alkanes.